Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the church in Ocean Park. And it is an exciting day. You can probably tell because we're all kind of buzzing. This is Black Poets Day. And thank you so much for being here for this. This is just, ah, I'm excited. We've got poets and we've got singers and we have, oh my goodness gracious. So <laughs> welcome to the church in Ocean Park. And we are going to start off with a poem and I did put it into the chat. So everybody, please start off, uh, put yourselves on mute. And if you just got here, you, you probably already know that we're recording this. So you'll be able to uh, watch again if you want to from this incredible morning. And so we're starting off with a poem that was originally written by James Weldon Johnson. And it was for a presentation in celebration of the birthday of Abraham Lincoln. And these days it's known as the Negro National Anthem. Some people call it the Black National Anthem. And it is lift every voice and sing. So are you ready? And thanks everybody for being here. And thank you, Mama True. <laughs> and Mama True, you see that Mama Ijoy is here today too. This is, we're so excited. So we're going to sing, lift every voice and sing. We'll just sing it together. And sorry, y'all have to be on mute, but we move along as we can. With tambourine in hand, we here we go. <laughs> lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place for which our people sigh. We have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered. Out of the gloomy past, till now we stand at last where the white gleam of our bright star is past. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who hast brought us thus, Far on the way, 
Thou who hast by thy might led us into the light. Keep us forever in the path we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Lest our hearts Drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand true to our God. True to each other's and true to ourselves and true to our native land. Welcome to the church in Ocean Park. Hello all, my name is Joseph Hepburn and I'm a member of the church in Ocean Park. We are all members here. We are here to welcome you to this unique interfaith community that is dedicated to social justice. Now you may be wondering if you are welcome here. We are interfaith. So you are welcome if you are Jewish, if you are Muslim, if you are Hindu, Buddhist, Christian, atheist, or some combination or something else altogether. You're welcome if you just came in from a protest march, if you aren't able to attend those marches, or if you are confused now about so many marches and what to do. You are welcome if you are want to be at a church before All Saints Day coming up, or if you want to get grounded for some coming family event or for the events coming during this week. You are welcome if you don't have a job, if you never had a job, or if you are frustrated now in trying to find one and you have not yet been successful. We extend a special invitation to those who are single, married, divorced, gay, transgender, filthy rich, or dirty poor. We extend a special invitation to those who are just browsing, just woke up, or just got out of prison. We don't care if you're more religious than the Pope or more ceremonial than the new king. We extend a special invitation to those who are uh, millennials, Gen Z, Gen X, or some other classification, you are welcome here at the church in Ocean Park. We invite soccer moms, tree huggers, latte sippers, vegetarians, junk food eaters. We invite those who are in recovery or still addicted, still struggling with addiction. We invite you if you're having problems or you're dung in the dumps, or if you just don't like organized religion. We offer a special invitation today to those who work too hard, those who don't work, can't spell, or because they are bored with staying home all day and heard that this is a strange church indeed. We offer a special invitation to those who could use a prayer right now, those who had religion shoved down their throats, or those who are struggling with some difficulty. We invite tourists, seekers, doubters, bleeding hearts, and you, yes, you, welcome to the church in Ocean Park. <laughs> Thank you, Chaplain Joseph. So we're going to take a couple of breaths all together and to chant. So please take a breath 
and breathe in again. And one more time, take a good breath. And let's chant words that come from one of Thich Nhat Hanh's communities. I have arrived, I am home, in the here and in the now. And we will chant this three times. I have arrived, I am home, in the here and in the now. I have arrived, I am home, in the here and in the now. I have arrived, I am home, in the here and in the now. Welcome to the Church in Ocean Park. Good morning. I'm Reverend Janet Gallery McKithen, and I'm the minister at the church in Ocean Park. And I also welcome you here. I'm really happy to see you. I'm really excited for this morning at uh, celebrating our annual celebration of Black Poetry Day and seeing some of you back and uh, just really glad that you're all here. Thank you so much. I can't wait to hear from our poets. Uh, uh, they're an amazing diverse group and I'm, I'm really glad that they're here with us. Uh, we are at, diverse so we are diverse in beliefs and so we sometimes hear things that you might not agree with uh, just remember if one person is speaking and they say something you disagree with that your voice is just as important as whoever it was that just spoke and if you'd like to talk about something longer than you were able to this morning put your name in the chat and uh, the topic that you'd like to discuss and we'll get back to you during the week so we, tr we strive to be a horizontal uh, as possible organization in that way. I'd like to begin with a um, land acknowledgement. But yeah, I, I know that everybody's sitting sort of in a different location, but we at the church in Ocean Park is sitting on, uh, the, our building is sitting on stolen land. Uh, to all our relations, we the settlers of this land honor the Quiche and the Chumash and the Tongva peoples. We are grateful. We acknowledge the harms of genocide, enslavement, forced assimilation, gender violence, destruction of sacred sites, and the burial of historic truth about indigenous suffering at the hands of US colonial settlerism. We also pay homage to those who were stolen from Africa, placed in bondage, and falsely named as Chattel and forced into labor, building our communities that we all sit in. We apologize for the harm of all of this and pledge ourselves to be part of a culture of repair. We commit to the continued struggle of justice and equity. Welcome to the Church in Ocean Park. Thank you. I welcome you too. I'm Louise. I'm the music minister here at church and I want to share a song right now. Uh, this is a song called Sing Hallelujah. It's by uh, Joe and Eddie. Lord is mighty strong. 
you so much, Louise. Thank you. Well, now I have the honor and privilege to introduce our first poet, and I'm going to introduce these poets very briefly, and their uh, longer bios will be in the chat. Uh, Connie Williams has, was with us last year, and he's come back. We're grateful for that. Connie Williams is a poet, actor, community activist, and performance artist with three collections of poetry. In 2015, he released two critically acclaimed CDs of his poetry accompanied by music titled River and Moan and Unsettled Water. He's the former artistic director and at the world stage and coordinator for Anansi Workshop, Anansi Writers Workshop. He's also the co-founder of the World Stage Press. Please welcome Connie Williams. Good morning. Um, and the poem I'm gonna read is a fairly short poem. Uh, it's called The Rarest of Sightings. The Rarest of Sightings. When the last time, when the last time you see a man with no hand, claiming he's lonely, surrendered reason for his heart to tender, and daily complaining he's hungry. This is how living escapes the grasp. Time mocks like a feral enemy. Calculated wars are fought over correctness inject poison into opportunity. When the first time, when the first time you see a man take off his pride, pray before he eats. He doesn't require a God to repent or forgive. Sacrifice always louder than bleats. Do you see a black man, when melanin makes him invisible. Birth certificate says violent is the first name. Last name is criminal. Have you ever trained with a black man trying to outrun racial profile every day? He laments the weight of his birthmark when premature death is not a disguise. Thank you. We don't get to sit with these very long before we go to the next one. I'm, I'm, I'd like to hear that again and again. Uh, Dr. Kim Harris is next. Uh, we will go to talk. Dr. Kim is grounded in a deep Christian commitment that recognizes the sacred and equal worth of all human beings. Dr. Kim brings a warm and loving spirit you've already witnessed today, together with extraordinary gifts as singer and leader of song, as scholar and educator, as preacher and leader of worship, to the demanding yet joyful intertwining tasks of building community and advancing social justice. Kim received her PhD from Union Theological Seminary in New York City. Today, she teaches at Loyola Marymount University as an assistant professor of African-American thought and practice in the Department of Theological Studies. Welcome, Dr. Kim. So thank you, Reverend Janet. Of course, I love being here at the church in Ocean Park. And I would like to this morning honor one of the incredible poets of our time. When people think of her, and that is Issa Marie Barnwell, they think of her as a singer, a leader of song. They think of her as one of the uh, co-founders of Sweet Honey and the Rock. And they think of her, they, you know, they know her songs and her incredible deep voice, which is just amazing. Well, Issei Barnwell wrote a poem a while back called Memories. And in her own life right now, she is experiencing dementia. And so 
her memories. It is hard for her to, <laughs> to remember many things. And yet she has friends that help her and teach her and help her to remember. But here's the original poem that she wrote. She says, I'm sitting here wanting memories to teach me to see the beauty in the world through my own eyes. I'm sitting here wanting memories to teach me to see the beauty in the world through my own eyes. You said you'd rock me in the cradle of your arms. You said you'd hold me till the storms of life were gone. You said you'd comfort me in times like these, and now I need you. Now I need you. So I am sitting here wanting memories to teach me to see the beauty of the world through my own eyes. Since you've gone and left me, there's been so little beauty. But I know I saw it clearly through your eyes. Now the world outside is such a cold and bitter place. And here inside, I have few things that will console. And when I try to hear your voice above the storms of life, then I remember all the things I was told. Well, I'm sitting here wanting memories to teach me to see the beauty of the world through my own eyes. Yes, I'm sitting here wanting memories to teach me to see the beauty of the world through my own eyes. I think on the things that make me feel so wonderful when I was young. I think on the things that made me laugh and made me dance, made me sing. I think on the things that make me grow into a being full of pride. I think on these things, for they are true. I'm sitting here wanting memories to teach me to see the beauty of the world through my own eyes. I thought that you were gone. But now, I know you're with me. You are the voice that whispers all I need to hear. I know a please, a thank you, and a smile will take me far. I know that I am you, and you are me, and we are one. I know who I am is numbered in each grain of sand. I know that I am blessed again and again and again and again. I am sitting here wanting memories to teach me to see the beauty of the world through my own eyes. Oh, those words, those words are so incredible by Dr. Barnwell. And you might be saying, and I know some of you put into the chat, yes, that you love this song. I love this song too. So you know what? A group of her friends got together and recorded this song. And you're going to, I'm going to play it for you now. And you'll see people like Melanie DeMore and Maggie Wheeler. And you'll see... Uh, Oh, goodness, Ar Arne Badson. You'll see some incredible people. I believe even Harry Belafonte is a part of this singing. So let's just watch. And you'll even see Issa Barnwell as she sings this song with those who love her so much as she goes through this time period. <laughs> I am sitting here wanting memories to teach me to see the beauty in the world through my own eyes. 
Yes, I am sitting here wanting memories to teach me to see the beauty in the world through my own eyes. You used to rock me in the cradle of your arms. You said you'd hold me till the pains of life were gone. You said you'd comfort me in times like these and now I need you. Now I need you, and you are gone. I am sitting here wanting memories to teach me to see the beauty in the world through my own eyes. Now that you've gone and left me, there's been so little beauty. But I know I saw it clearly through your eyes. Now the world outside is such a cold and bitter place. Here inside I have few things that will console. And when I try to hear your voice above the storms of life, then I remember all that. Bring me all your dreams, you dreamers. Bring me all your heart melodies, that I may wrap them in a blue cloud cloth. Far from the two rough fingers of the world. Bring me all your dreams, you dreamers. memories. One of the most beautiful songs ever written. That song now always reminds me of my grandpa. Eastside Bodwell was one of the great human beings of my life and my wife Pam. Thank you for the music you have composed for people all around the world. You have been a blessing to all of us. Happy, happy birthday. We love you, Isai. Thank you, Dr. Kim. So moving. So beautiful. Thank you so much. Patricia Tricia Crochet is a poet, independent journalist, writer, cultural arts producer, and promoter, massage therapist, and health educator. She's a co-founder of SWAM, Spoken Word, Art and Music, Poetry Lounge. Her poetry, prose and writing has been featured in many venues and publications. She is the author of Orisha Talks, Tales of Lust, Love and Historical Memory, 
a book of poetry and prose. Welcome, Patricia Crochet. I don't think that I see her on our participants list. So oh, okay. maybe, Louise, if you could uh, text her and see where she is. And yes, I don't think I see her. Okay, well, we'll move on to Ron. Sorry about that, Ron. We keep uh, moving you back and forward here. You, Ron, but we're so excited to have you. Ron Dow is the author of Watts Uprise, a poetry collection released by World Stage Press in July of 2022. Watts Uprise is a very public love letter to the city of Watts, Los Angeles. The collection renders homage to its most notable artistic landmark, the Watts Towers, and its creator, Sabato Rodia. The towers ep epitomize the beauty, strength, and resiliency of the city and its inhabitants, and it serves as a reminder that beautiful things must be kept heart close and loved. Welcome, Ron Dowell. Thank you, Janet, and good morning, everyone. Thank you for having me. I have a question for you. Nod your head if you have heard of the Watts Towers. Okay. Again, nod your head if you have been to the Watts Towers. Okay, that's most of you, and I'm glad to hear that. For those who haven't, I'm going to introduce you to the Watts Towers today. Watts Uprise after Sabato Simon Rodia. I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something, something big, Simon Rodia said to Carmen, his wife. There's no Watts story. Sorry, most sorry. I'm going to do something, said the wee Italian immigrant, pulling buckles on his extra small size overalls. And in 1921, hand mixed water, gravel, silky sand, he shoveled, anchoring, cementing, detritus towers made of chicken wire, broken ceramics, found seashells, dishes. Big red cars hummed, vibrated along rails used to bend scrap steel, refusing boats, rivets, and wells. Simon cemented rocks, discarded tile, slag, seven up, magnesium milk bottle parts. He used lacy, intricate wire mesh, wrapping towering spires, walls, and a gilded gazebo into a soaring explosion of color, form, and texture. A crescendo of cackling crows, pigeon wings flapping, mortar stamp shape, mortar stamp heart shaped ciphers. The laden vessels bow points to Sereno, Italy, a ship shaped transport he called Nuestro Pueblo, the Watts Towers. Big, they shrug at quakes, Santa Ana's, the stress test of haters. Big, every rung, member, arch, and portal scaled to his short stature using no scaffold, blowtorch, or power tool, only his determined capacity to pulley a thousand pounds, stretched so far, ascend a earthbound toil, 30, 40 feet high, to create at extreme limits, his duende, big. I did it all by myself, never had a single helper, Simon said, no money. Only his vision to upraise, transcend sweat and knuckle blood, elevated beyond expectation, big, no wind protection, sun, cold rain, high over California sycamores, sickle-shaped vapid green leaves, camouflaged bark with spiked seeds dangling from their boughs, over purpley jacaranda blooms, over a bougainvillea anarchy, fragrant like a corner skunk, over sharp teeth cali palm fronds, Dizzy, more top each hour, day, month, tasting ocean salt, sweaty stink. Black Americans, Jews, Mexican, Nisei, East Indian, Greeks, Chinese, Tongva, dark like ants below, tongues thick from wine and existential messages of love and compassion. Big, Simon, high enough to view from bright days, public housings, cinder block curse, Central Avenue, Mercury's amber wing foot gills the fat Goodyear blimp. 103rd Street, the red clay Largo Theater's hip roof looms over the sleepy green K Furniture and Appliance Company blade sign. Downtown LA, the pyramid shaped roof of City Hall feeds Old County Jail like a vampire's taste for blood and gristle. In the, in the sliver of an orange sunset's light, Simon lifts his last finger before blackness, hurried 
like restrooms on a Las Vegas turnaround, his truth above the city of lies. The Lord said, surprise me, and he did. Simon sculpted his letter to Watts, big. At 100 feet, he scanned northward, the Hollywood land sign, spotted Boyle Heights Big General Hospital solid body and Sears and Roebuck art decoration. Watts Tower sway in the circadian rhythm when the sun knifes across the sky. Outsider art glories inside Watts' heart like Charles Mingus's jazz bass chest punch blankets my soul. Big, Bud Powell's sack squeals, Nipsey Hussle's fist preparation and opportunity, Watts' prophets teach. I'm going to do something, something big, Simon said, and he did. Simon's sculpt, Rodeo sculpted 34 year long love letter to Watts, survival, Ivor Tuguri's indictment. Big, creativity, Wanda Coleman tossing verbal Molotov cocktails. Big, purified strength like leaf cutter ants. Big, Judd Powell's unity, glass blown grass fields, and community resilience like goldfish schools. All grand treasures and broken frames. frames. Big, beautiful things to keep heart close, love. Our town with its whole big heart, open, bleeding for the world like a wildfire, something big. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Really, really appreciate that. I felt like got more under, more understanding of the Wax Towers for sure. Uh, Dr. Kim? Yes. Well, you know, there have been times when, uh, uh, when Reggie Harris comes to join us, but he's not with us live and in person on Zoom this morning because he is part of leading uh, the Living Legacy Pilgrimage. So a group of people got on a bus in Memphis, Tennessee, and they've been going to civil rights sites. And it's been incredible. I've seen some posts on Facebook from, from there. And we're hoping, I know Reverend Janet, maybe at some point all of us can, can get together on that bus and go. But he wanted to send something for our celebration of Blacks, uh, Black poets. So going to show you a video that Reggie made with his friend Scott Ansley and my friend too. And it is, they did the song by Sam Cooke, Chains Gonna Come. Yes. And at the beginning of this, You'll hear Reggie actually recite some poetry from Langston Hughes. By the poet Langston Hughes. Langston Hughes, an African-American poet who lived in Harlem in New York. But he was aware of the great history of our nation, a nation that brings so many different people together, so many different cultures. And it, around one single issue. And so it was that Langston Hughes said, hold fast to dreams. For when dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Hold fast to dreams. For when dreams go, life is a barren field frozen with snow. With billowing sails, the galleons came bringing men and dreams and women and dreams. Some were free hands, hoping for a greater freedom. Some were indentured hands, seeking to find their freedom. Some were slave hands, guarding in their hearts the very seed of freedom. But one word was there always, and that word Freedom. I was born by the river in a little town, just like that river, baby. I've been running ever since. It's been a long. Let's go. 
just not to hang around. It's been a long time, time coming, and no change is gonna come. Oh, yes, it is. Well, I go, yes, I go to see my brother. so much beautiful rendition one of the best ever and i see that we have trisha has come back i believe she's back with us it's wonderful that they have you back trisha would you like to uh share with us your poem now trisha coche is a poet independent journalist a writer cultural arts producer and promoter massage therapist and health educator and co-founder of spoken word art and music welcome back Trisha Cochet. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. <sighs> Cosmic dance, number one. A dance through life with the eyes of an artist, the hands of a healer, the heart of a bodhisattva, the mind of Imhotep, purpose and power of Obatala, this is my prayer. Know thyself, your blood, your bones, star stuff made flesh. Know that this place is not your home. Record of geological impact, dressed in all white, we danced ourselves into trance. We poured libation with our sweat. We moved into praise. Uduwa, Pachamama, Mother Earth, that mama energy that sustains. Caressing the damp, cool soil with our bare, hinted feet, our massages woke her up. Oh, is Trisha still with us? She may be frozen. Yes. Well, let me show the cover of her book because I do have that here. So if you're interested in, in her works, it's the Orisha Talks, Tales of Lust, Love, and his historical, I love it, historical memory a book of poetry and prose. Yes. So perhaps she'll be able to come back, but uh, I hope so. Thanks Wonderful. so much, Tricia. Thank you, Dr. Kim. <clears throat> now is the time for a community sharing. This is a time when, if you would like to make a statement or ask a question of one of the po poets or something else, uh, this is your chance to do that. You can raise your hand Zoom style you know how to go down to reactions and you push the button, raise your hand, or you can do this and we may see you. Uh, and you can make a com brief, brief comment or ask a brief question. It could be a poet that does it as well. So anybody who's on the screen for any reason <laughs> is uh, 
fair game to uh, make a comment. Uh, Craig, Ali. You know, I'm so in love and fascinated by the depths of the rich African oral tradition as brought up by the poets. I, I so look forward to each time you feature the spoken word because it is so uplifting. This is the historical roots that kept us alive during the darkest periods of slavery, as well as delivered us in this, you know, in salvation. Because as we sung and as we more or less reminisced, we always had that hope that because of our creativity and our expressiveness, that, you know, we could survive. And as we look forward, this is, you know, again, the hope that brings me, you know, this is the, the hope that, that inspires me to continue on in the struggle. Because so many of the stuff that you've dealt with has to do with the struggle of what we were going through. So I, I appreciate, uh, finally, you know, uh, your contribution and, and acknowledgement of that oral tradition. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. I am back, but because my internet is goes in and out, let's I'll just do it at another time. Okay. Well, could could you tell us just maybe a little bit about what inspires you to write your poetry? I was inspired to write this particular book related to the Orishas actually through my dance. I studied Brazilian dance for several years and have been to Brazil. And so um, when I decided, yeah, I have stories to tell that I want to share. Um, and when I decided I wanted to, to have the Orishas, which are actually the forces of nature out of the um, West African tradition, uh, I, I said, you know, I um, had to have the Orishas guide the reader through the book. Uh, and so each chapter is related to a particular Orisha. Oh, wonderful. Beautiful. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Louise. Yeah, I just want to say this has been so beautiful and moving and, and, and just wonderful. And um, I just want to say I feel so lucky, humble and fortunate and happy to be part of this and I feel so happy that um, I asked Maggie Wheeler to sing here and she did one time and I've been in a workshop with Melanie Demore and um, and also Issa Barnwell and I went to her singing in community workshop at Esalen and I'm just so lucky to know these beautiful singers and you poets are wonderful, and I'm very happy to hear you and be here today. So, uh, oh yeah, and Arne Batson has sung at our Communitas three times, and I just feel so lucky that I know these people and get to get to share with them and share them with you. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Connie. Oh, Connie, I was wondering, uh, you're the co-founder of the World Stage Press. I was wondering uh, if you could, I know that's a long question, but if you just could say something about the co-founding of that and what inspired that. <laughs> well, I was, I was uh, uh, just quickly going to just give a, <clears throat> a just a brief overview. <clears throat> um, most of you know that uh, uh, the Watch Writers Workshop produced uh, an incredible um, a group of amazing writers, uh, uh, including Kamau Dao, the uh, Watch Prophets, Ojinki, um, uh, Jane Cortez was a, a part of that uh, group uh, that was part of that uh, artistic collective in Watts that was uh, funded by Bert Schoenberg, um, wrote On the Waterfront. Um, I know most of you probably know who that is. Uh, also had uh, Wanda Coleman 
<clears throat> was a part of the Watch Writers Workshop. Uh, K. Curtis Lyle, um, uh, uh, my friend uh, who just passed away just recently. Trisha, you can help me out. What is his name uh, who just passed away earlier this year? Uh, uh, but the Watch Writers Workshop was an amazing workshop. Uh, like I said, produced wonderful, amazing writers. And from there, you get the World Stage Performance Gallery in Lamert Park. Um, and that uh, was started by Kamau and Billy Higgins. And from there, we had the Anunzi Writers Workshop uh, that I was a part of for over 25 years in Lamert Park. And and my idea for the World Stage Press was creating legacy uh, uh, for the work that Kamau and Billy had started at the at the World Stage, and also to continue to provide a, a place where uh, uh, the African American and other underserved uh, uh, peoples could have an opportunity to be able to write their own stories, which is the most important part of what we do is being able to tell our own stories because for so long uh, we were not able to as a as a black man growing up in the, in the south in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s <laughs> uh, we didn't uh, those opportunities were few and far in between so it's really about having space a safe space like today like today <laughs> in this space Creating safe spaces for individuals to be able to to share, to speak truth, 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 and 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 to be able to tell our own stories, uh, and and that's and that's what World Stage Press and the Anansi Writers Workshop has been all about. And I'm just really, really fortunate to have been a part of it. And uh, I just want to be able to continue to create opportunities for others like myself, because others created a space for me. Beautiful. Thank you. And uh, Tricia put it in the chat that you can get all three of your books, World Stage Press. And we're so great. We also, ha we also have a writing program called CLI that individuals can participate in. And at the end of that program, your book is published. So it's a really wonderful uh, community press that we started, the writing program and also Sam's Library of Poetry on, in Florence, which is the largest port, uh, a library of poetry in the state of California, right in the hood, right in the hood. Sam's Library of Poetry, CLI, which is Community Literary Initiative, which is the writing program that you can go through. And at the end of the program, you can get, uh, you can have your book published. It's a wonderful program. Ron participated, uh, Tricia participated, in this program as well. Janet, uh, yeah. if I may, in, in speaking about the Watts Writers Workshop, I know one person who had a real significant impact on me that came up out of there was Quincy True. Oh, yeah, yeah I forgot Quincy. I, I, but I was just trying to think of my brother who passed away early uh, this year. Ah, is, his name is escaping me uh, right now. Uh, but Quincy True, uh, I, I did a thing with him earlier this year. Uh, he uh, for his new book. Uh, I hosted hosted him. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, Ron D, what has it, it, it inspired you? Well, just kind of like what what Tani was saying there. You know, I grew up in L.A. Right, a stone's throw from the Watts Towers. And I lived in Jordan Downs housing projects. And from there, we moved to the Palm Lane housing projects a little bit between Watts and Compton. And what's happened now is that both of those housing project projects have been, have been torn down. So it just kind of blows my mind that this is a form of erasure for me. So I made it my mission to capture and to, and to, and to and to, you know, to capture this reality that there, there were people who lived in LA for a generation that suddenly have no point of reference. So my idea was just to kind of to capture that and, and, to, and to play it forward, really. I just didn't want to be erased. Mm -hmm. Un unfortunately, really quick, unfortunately, Ron, and to the rest of us, erasure has been what has happened since uh the first uh slave ship showed up in africa so <laughs> so erasure of our history 
and erasure of the fact that Africa is the largest continent, which uh, and the way it's portrayed in maps is never portrayed accurately. So uh, the fact that we're on this land that belonged to the Chumash people and, and, and other indigenous people. So erasure is. Right. We've got to fight about it, fight over it, fight to get visible. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we really, really thank you. We have a lot of uh, poets here. I mean, Fred Whitlock has been uh, hosting poetry events at the church in Ocean Park. Some of you, I know because of whoever I met through Fred. And uh, so. And I spoke at his church before, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say just how moving your poetry has been for me, all all of your poetry. Um, I remember the first time uh, I saw you and you read that poem about Miles and Sisley. And uh, it, it still resides in me. I still carry it around and remember that anytime I listen to Miles Davis. <laughs> mm. Uh, everyone's poetry today has been so moving, and and I'm glad that we have a chance to have words that are powerful and something we can understand and take home to our heart. It really moves me. I appreciate every poet that read and every poem that was read today. Okay, well, thank you so much, Fred. And you know what? We're not done yet. <laughs> we have got another poet. Would you unmute yourself, please, Dr. Lucille Ijoy? <laughs> like that? Like that. Okay. This is my mom. Many of you already know her, Dr. Mama, <laughs> Grandmama. And she has been inspired by many young poets that write rap and, and many even more seasoned poets that write rap. So mom, why did you decide to write the rap that we're going to uh, show about voting? <laughs> well, I think it's I think it's fun. I love everything that the people did. I'm always inspired by people who have different things that they do and they do it well and they love doing it. It's their gift and they just take off with it. It's all in their body, their toes. They, they, you know, it's what they do. So I'm 90 years old. And so I said, you know what? I like, <laughs> I like to write, write 90 year old raps, right? But I want to put them to some kind of music, some kind of beat. And when you get older, you still got a beat. Everybody gets old, they still got a beat. Raise your hand if you still got a beat. Yeah, you got the beat, you know? So then that's what I, that's what I did. That's why I decided to put a beat to, but you know, the vote. We got to talk about some voting. You know that? Yes, we do. So we're, we're going to show you and your beat and the vote. And uh, and no, it is not me dancing that you all will see in this video. <laughs> <laughs> the person that helped mom produce it, uh, Bill Jolly, his niece is the, is the one that is helping out with the additional dancing. So let's do uh, the two-step. The two steps. Listen to grandmama and take this special note. Step one is registration. Step two, go out and vote. It's called the two step. It's called the two step. Yeah, the two step. It's called the two step. Calling all citizens, don't you delay. It's time to do the two step and do it right away. You say you want to have, you say you say you want to change. Well, get up off your duck, you have the power to arrange. Two step, it's called the two step. Yeah, the two step, it's called the two step. Listen to grandmama and take this special note. Step one is registration, step two, go out and vote. It's called the two step, it's called the two step. Yeah, the two step, it's called the two step. Step one, step two. Step one, step two. We want jobs, good education, our country to be safe. It's our responsibility, a duty we must face. Use a paper ballot and a regular pen. Or social media can be a good friend. It's called the two step. It's called the two step. Yeah, the two step. It's called the two step. 
Step one is registration. Step two, go out and vote. Step one is registration. Step two, go out and vote. Step one. Step two. Step one. Step two. Break it down. Great health care is at the top of the list. This is a high priority on this. We must insist it's called a two-step. It's called a two-step. The economy we want is for positive action. Now make it a mission, not a one-time reaction. Two-step. It's called a two-step. Listen to grandmama and take this special note. Step one is registration. Step two, go out and vote. It's called a two-step. It's called a two-step. Yeah, the two-step. It's called a two-step. We're in this together, no matter the weather. It's a voting campaign that grandma make a prank. It's called a two-step. It's called a two-step. Yeah, the two-step. It's called a two-step. Step one is registration. Step two, go out and vote. Step one is registration. Step two, go out and vote. Step one is registration. Step two, go out and vote. Step one is registration. Step two, go out and vote. Step one. Step two. Step one. Step two. It's called a two step. It's called a two step. Two step. Called a two step. Yeah. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yeah. Are you with me? Are you with me? Step one is registration. Step two, go out and vote. One is registration. Step two, go out and vote. Step one is registration. Step two, go out and vote. One is registration. Step two, go out and vote. Yeah, the two step. It's called a two step. Ah! Oh, the two step. <laughs> it's the two step. There you go. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> It was fun doing that. I'll tell you, it was really fun. Um, amazing, amazing performance. <laughs> so thanks, Mom. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Do the two steps. Somebody said it in the chat. It's what, 14 more days or less? Just a few more days before it's November the, the, the 8th, I believe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, okay. Thanks a bunch, Mom. You're welcome. <laughs>